This is our question and answer video, volume 12. They've proven to be a lot more popular than they originally thought they would be. And what I try to do is answer the questions again from my YouTube channel. And we try to pass on what I think is good quality information, share some pictures and some uh, stories more. And I guess anything that's relating to painting or motorcycling or even carbon fiber. But sharing that information is a very, very positive thing, I think, to help in the, the sport of motorcycling grow and and not only grow, that you enjoy the bikes you already have to the maximum and you make some new friends along the way and go to a couple of fun meetups and it just turns out it's just more fun than not having it. So this is question and answer 12. We try to answer questions sent in on the comments section of our YouTube channel. We try to share information. Some of the information comes from other people, some from me, some from my friends. We try to gather the information, try to make it as honest and accurate as possible, and then share it. Now, we, we certainly have people in, the, in our circle of friends that each have some skills that we can draw on when we need to know something. And I think a lot of it is, a lot of it is that we, we used to have a thing called the A-Team was a big group of people and there were people that were mechanics and painters and people that knew about this, that or the other thing. And it's shrunken in the past year, but that knowledge that they shared already is still with us. We're gonna share some of it today. So before I even start the video today, I wanted to thank Oscar. Oscar with the little wind slayer that goes on the Canon camera and I've shown it on several of the previous videos. Seems to work really well. Oscar, thank you for turning us on to that. And I'm sharing and passing on that information. Anybody that you know has a Canon camera and has wind noise issues, that's a very inexpensive way to make it a whole lot better. Now the first question, and this this I had a little bit of a problem with this question because I couldn't find the video was the problem. A fellow named Backyard Builder, he was watching all the FCR videos, and of course there's hundreds of them, and step by step by step and he said he really enjoyed them he was uh well well he watched them anyway that's a good way to tell if he enjoyed them. anyway of course that's a very extensive thing the reason it gets so long is it's a 900 hour restoration trying to condense it down to pff, whatever but anyway this this was one of the questions he had that i really i really dropped the ball here and i have to admit this was a problem he asked me he wanted to paint a frame on one of his bikes and he said how do you prepare a frame and I said oh easy and I went and searched my channel and I could not find a video for Alan Albert's frame and I remember when we did Alan Albert's Honda we did the frame and we did a really extensive job I found pictures but I did not to my chagrin I did not find a video and I know what happened that's a really old video and I didn't title it frame I titled it something who knows paint or something so it it made me very aware of how in the future I have to very carefully make the title for the video that's something that people are researching it it's easier for them to find now I did try and I did try to find it believe me and I didn't succeed I did find the photos but I know what he'd really like to have the video and, and shame on me but here's one thing he asked about the paint brands what brands are good and what brands are bad and I thought this is a question I have heard a million times. Whether you like a certain brand or this brand or that brand and certain parts of the country you can't buy this, you can't buy that. I'm sure overseas it's different. But there's one golden rule. If you start with, if you if you really are super serious about this and you start with, let's say, Brand A Primer, Brand A Color and Brand A Clear, you have really minimized the chance anything's going to happen. If you limit it to two, if you use spray can primer, then brand A. Brand. If you do three things, color is one thing. Let's say it's color right. Primer is Rust-Oleum, and and clear is Five Star. Well, the thing is, every time you add a new brand into that, it's like adding a layer of salami into a salami sandwich. The chances of something happening rare, very rare. But when they do happen, and it's happened to other people I know, it happened to Mark Morgan already when we painted his FC 600, and. When I researched it out, and we went to the paint dealer actually with Mark's parts, showed him, and he said, oh, our paint is not compatible with XYZ. I wish he would have told us that when we bought the paint, because the paint was, and it was white pearl, it was really expensive paint. 
So that's, and that's model airplane technology is always the same thing. If you start with a brand and try to, in the, in the case we're using thinner, use their thinner too. Now, I, I have color right thinner that Joe Padula supplied for the 888 restoration. Keeping it that as few product brands as possible minimizes the chance you're going to have any little surprises along the way. But most of the time you don't. But the way you ensure that this is not a real problem, you get a light bulb, you get a tin can, something. And you go through the whole process before you ever paint a gas tank. Or you put the primer on, let it dry, put a little bit of color, put a little bit of the, the clear, and it'll take a look at it and wait to see, wait a day or so, it's to 24 hours, it should be hard that you can't put your fingernail in there. And we have some other paint questions we're going to address later, but I want to address them in complete detail. This, this is one issue of trying to minimize how many brands of paint you have in a paint job, it'll always be in your favor to have less different brands. So I did have the photos. This is this is Alan, his frame, and the parts we painted. And basically painting the frame, you prep it exactly the way you prep a gas tank. Or if you're really, uh, at this point, it could be sandblasted, bead blasted. And hey, I was young there. I had uh, no wrinkles, <laughs> fewer wrinkles. Anyway, and, and I remember this. Now, Alan has since passed away, but he was quite a guy. And he knew a lot of my friends, Ray Straub included. And he raced alongside a Ray, and they actually switched parts at the races sometimes. Now, Alan was a serious racer, and he was a friend of Kenny Augustine, and who was a good friend of mine. And so we, we kind of all knew each other in a roundabout way. But what Alan did at one time, he was out of racing for a long time. And he wanted to come back and do some track days and this inspired him to, he worked in a bicycle shop uh, and he actually was quite a guy that generous with his time and everything when my grandson was learning how to ride a bicycle. So anyway, this is a, uh, the gas tank to his bike. And when we went to kinetic analysis, of course, is Kenny Augustine's business. And he brought over what I thought was priceless, and it was like what Bob V had of his racing days. This is Alan, of course. And he, I love looking at these old pictures. Now, to, it's my problem. I have very, very few pictures of back in the Amar days. I, I think Ray has more than I have, in fact. But we've got some of the old race bike parts. And here, when, when this bike was done, Alan went back to the track. And I know he was reliving these great memories that he had the same way I do uh, when I do anything similar to this restore an older bike or get it running and he brought this bike when it was done he brought it to bikes and breakfast and it was one of the stars of the show now another thing when at any time Alan was ever over my house and God he had passion he had passion for bicycling he had passion for motorcycles and he was he was one of the true uh, I, the good old days, I guess. And and luckily for him, somebody had given him, or they were his, I don't remember, all of these old pictures. Now, I don't have that many. and It's my fault because I never took pictures back then. But his race bikes, Kenny Augustine did the head on this bike, I know that. And he was a very enthusiastic racer. He really was, he had the passion that uh, somehow we all share, whether we like it or not. And when we restored this bike from, I noticed made made his day complete. And and I do enjoy working with people that have a passion for what they're doing, not just doing it because they're bored or they don't have anything else to do with their time. And Alan certainly is one of the people I'm glad to, uh, to share these pictures. And he's not with us anymore, but you can imagine that I always think it was, and Dallas always uses the saying, it was a life well spent. And when I look back at pictures like this, I wonder how many of us at the end can say we have had a life well lived. Okay, a really good question from Henry. Henry, he, he wants to buy a GSX 1100G. He loved the bike. He likes everything about it. There's only one problem with the bike. And I have run into this. And I'll, I'll just share with you my, my cure for it is pretty simple. And anybody can do it. The problem is the fenders are chrome and the, the chrome is very poor. It can't be polished out. It's got pits and whatever. Now, my RD is a good example of that. When I bought the RD, the fenders were shot. They were totally shot. 
Anyway, now there's no reason, unless you're a purist or unless you're somebody that you want to go to shows and be judged by how pure the bike is. I have no interest in that at all. I want the bike to be beautiful. I want the bike to be reliable when I ride it, fun to ride. If it's got a little bit different touch to the fenders, I don't care. Or a bolt that doesn't belong on a Kawasaki or a whatever. But here's the thing. I think, and I'll show some pictures of things I think you could do. One of the things is you can paint the fenders to match the bike. Or in, in the case of some bikes that are two-tone, you can paint them black or shiny black. Or in the case of the RD, I painted the front, the back. I put the same stripe that was on the tank, similar stripe. Design something up like that. Now, the nice part about doing that, you can undo it. If, you, if you're all done and you, you, like, you don't like that color, you can paint it a different color before you even put it back on a bike. Chrome, to me, I'm not a, not a big fan of having a bike that's all chromed out. I see bikes all the time that have thousands of dollars worth of chrome. The show we just went to at Rutsut, several of the people had the whole engine and everything chromed out. I don't even like chrome wheels. I like the look of aluminum, and I like the look of shiny paint. But that's just me. And all paintwork and all of these design things are very subjective. But Henry, that is one of the choices you always have. If there's bad chrome, and in the worst of all worlds, you can paint it silver. And from, from you know, maybe, maybe it'll look a little bit more like what you're thinking. But I think most bikes that have a chrome front fender, if you paint it, it's going to look just fine. So my RD is an example of, of a bike that had terrible chrome on the fenders. And when I bought it, it bothered me, and I was—I actually went and priced out getting them re-chromed at a place that I know to be reliable, and it was just more money than I wanted to spend at the time. And I thought, I'm not looking to make this a purist bike. I'm not looking to make it exactly like the day it left the Yamaha showroom. Now, some people do enjoy that. Some people, that's their thing. But I want something that I like, and I like, for instance, the engine polished. A, a, a real RD doesn't have a polished engine. Well... The exhaust pipes are <clears throat> marginal at best, would be the best way. But I polished them as good as I possibly could. And when I put it all together, even when I had the cafe seat on and I had the different bars, I wanted the bike to be to be mine. And I don't have that. You know, I just try to share it, that if, if you have chrome fenders on a bike, there's no reason you can't do what I did and get matching paint. Or if you can't match the paint or you don't want to, you can paint them gloss black. And I, God forbid I even have to say this, maybe you could even paint them flat black. I don't know. But that's how I handled the bad chrome problem, Henry. So here's a comment Daniel sent in that applies to me right now. I'm, I exactly have to make this decision right now. He has an, an RD400. He wanted to know what tires to use. Well, this is really easy. They, make, they still make Bridgestone, Dunlop, still make tires to fit right on the RD, the sizes they call for. They also make, and I've been researching this out. I was with Bob V, I researched that. I derometered tires over at his house. The replica K81 seemed like something I'm going to be interested in doing very soon. My RD has over 10,000 miles on the tires. They're bald. They're coming up on those little strips, and, and they're squared off, so the handling is getting wonky too. But I have used Bridgestones. I have used Dunlops. And on my case, I always make the tires one size bigger in the front, one size bigger in the back. But you have to be aware on an RD, if you go one size bigger on a back tire and the chain has to go all the way forward, an RD swing arm is tapered in the front and you can run into an interference problem. And once you do that, you really have two choices. You can move, put an extra link in the chain and try to get it all the way back like a drag strip swing arm. I, I'm not in favor of that. but. I did have a problem. I don't remember which tire it was. I had put an oversized tire on. And it wasn't that I wanted to make it look like a chopper or something. The purpose of putting the bigger tires on, and let me, let me just share this. The purpose of the bigger tires is to raise the bike up off the ground a small amount, but a small amount is a lot. Because when you corner all of the older bikes, if you're really cornering hard, they drag the foot pegs. Everybody that raced had problems with dragging the foot peg, dragging that U-shaped thing that goes under the pipes, dragging this, dragging that, and the there's a lot of solutions, of course. You can put your own rear sets on the bike. You can raise the pegs, uh, make your own custom stuff. But the easiest solution is two things. Put a, a shock that's either a little bit longer, a half inch longer, has a more compression in the spring, 
you can make a shim out of PVC pipe to put under the spring in the front, or you can, if you really want to go all the way, you can get the uh, Race Tech. There's a kit with the springs and the, the gold valves. It depends on how serious you want it to be. Now, I don't have any of that stuff on my bike, but I've gotten away with it by just having the bike on bigger tires. Gives me just a little more clearance. I don't have any issues with drag and things, but then I'm not taking it to the racetrack. At the racetrack, I would have a problem, and, and then I would have to resort to some of these more complex things, but it's nice. They still make the tires for the RD because it's, there's still a lot of RDs around, and the neat thing is when I get those K81s, I'll show the whole process, I'll derometer them, and I'll get brand new, I'll hopefully I can get brand new tubes and everything, and then that, that, the best part of doing an RD tire change is trying not to pinch the tubes. That's always the best part. You know, just to show, these are the exhaust systems from the RD, and they're, they're ground away from AMAR days. That one in particular has some pieces welded to it. This one here, I think, just ground down. But that was a typical, a typical problem with RDs when you wanted to do them in club racing. Now, a fellow named Backyard Builder wrote in a comment that he he'd made the mistake that Scott has made. I have made, of course, many times. I'm sure. People are paying a lot all run into this. They put too much clear on in one shot. In other words, they put four or five coats on without letting it dry out. Now, I answered the very simple way I answered Scott. It's a simple thing. I'm very old school. I like to put a, the two coats on that they call for and then let it dry over, overnight lightly, just lightly sand it, wet sand it with, well, let's say, with 1,000 grit, 1,500 grit. It's not critical. And then put that last coat on and then saw a total of three coats of clear. But I put it on, and it's hard, when you look at the videos, it's hard to figure this out, because I put it on very thin, like you would do it with an airbrush. I don't put it on with like an automotive gun, where it just goes on like, like you're decoupaging it. So my little technique that I've shown many times, it works for me, it's worked many, many years. We've, we've done many bikes with it, including this one right here. And that's, that's a critical thing if you're new to painting, is not to, not to try to get carried away and put all this paint on and turn it into decoupage. Because sometimes it takes forever to dry, and then the worst of all, or sometimes it doesn't dry at all. I don't know the chemical reason for that, but I know I've done the test with the bottle cap, pour the extra paint, leave it a sixteenth of an inch thick, see how long it takes to dry. Sometimes it doesn't dry at all. Not sure why. Anyway, uh, this is, and there's always some sad stuff. Now we've had some paint questions and some technical stuff. There's always the sad stories. All videos should have a story. This is a sad one. <laughs> Georgia Sportsman. Well, Georgia Sportsman, I really relate to this. He had a brand new bike. He had the bike 30 minutes, and he picked up a nail on a tire. <laughs> now, I had my new MT-09 at, I think, around 3,000 miles. I pulled into the garage and had a, a nail. Nobody in, the, nobody in my neighborhood is doing construction work. I don't know where the nail came from. But it went flat in my driveway. And then at 6,000, around 6,000, I think, the brand new Michelin 2 that was on there picked up a nail somewhere on the trip, started getting flat, and I made it home. Eh, I don't know. So I've had two. So I'm one ahead of you. If we're having a race, I'm one lap ahead. That's the kind of race I don't want to win. Now, another funny stories. Funny stories are good, by the way. Gorgon, and he says... He's finding out that as he's aging, he likes smaller bikes better than big bikes. Well, what happens to all of us as you age, like the same thing I always say, the bike I had at 18 or 20, the drag bike with no shocks in the back and, and handlebars like this, and you had to lean over and put your nose in a speedometer to ride it, that was great at 18. And a little bit later in life, I wanted a different, little more comfort, a seat with a little padding, not a, you know, and... And now I'm at the point I want all bikes to be like I'm comfortable riding them. Comfort is king when you get to be, I'm 76, going to be 77 soon. But, but if you're younger, here's a tip. Keep suffering, and you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it when you get older. Now, and on another guy, this is all, these questions kind of redundant. Another guy, Steve, put four coats of clear at once, and... He thought the paint was dry, put his tank bag on, the tank bag sank right into the clear. Well, that's kind of going with the other, we just talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> Another guy, and I know who this is very well, Scott, 
Scott's the guy that did that. He, he says, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's more than one Scott. Maybe I better apologize. Anyway, Scott has sprockets hanging in his kitchen like Karen. Karen loves to have sprockets on the wall. Well, <laughs> whatever turns you on. Yeah, I have so many of them. I have so many discs and sprockets that hang in the garage in a shop. Even in my bathroom, there's FCR discs hanging. Anyway, <laughs> now another nice thing. I like these kind of uh, these kind of questions. Uh, Mark in Spain had the MT09 check light come on, and he watched the video and got it straightened out. And then he took it to a dealer, and they found out what actually was the problem. Well, and it was one of the sensors. Well, on mine, and I'll be honest how I did my MT-09. It was relatively new. I went and I wanted to see the traction controls. I wanted to turn it on, off. There's two settings, invasive, and then like a track day setting, and then it's off. Well, if you want to do wheelies and burnouts, and uh, you'll leave it off, of course. In my case, I'm riding on relatively twisty, slippery roads where there can be all kind of exciting stuff happening. And I like the traction control on all the while. I'm not racing anybody, so if, if somebody gains a half a half a car length on me in a corner, it doesn't matter at all. But but playing with that traction control, the check engine light came on. Now I looked on and thank you to the guy that posted the video of, of where you buy the gizmo and and but the only problem is he never posted that you need the adapter. So I made my own video showing how to use the adapter and now Mark in Spain used that to his advantage. So it's every time you can do that, I that you can pass that information on. Because this whole nonsense thing of, oh, if you bike if you bike key cups once, bring it to the Yamaha dealer. Or not, even worse, bring it to the Ducati dealer. You know, and you hit cash registers ring, cha ching, cha ching. Oh yeah. Now I don't I don't believe in any of that stuff. So I like to do all the work myself unless I possibly can't. And that then I have to resort to having people that are more professional than I am, like Luciano or Vince, that or people that have that as their specialty. But 90% of the time, I can do what I have to do to get through the day. And I like it that way. I like to never have to deal with a motorcycle dealer at all, if possible. I really didn't want to give anybody the impression I was bad-mouthing motorcycle dealers, because some people depend on them, of course, and they're willing to pay the, uh, the price. But in my case, I get some satisfaction out of knowing I can either work on the bike or fix it or diagnose it or do some of the work myself, or in some cases, most of the work, and actually in some cases, all the work. But And it's a skill you have to learn little by little and be prepared for a few failures along the way. But in the end, when you can maintain your own motorcycle and never have to go to a dealer, or almost never, wow, are you ahead of the game? Does that not only financially but I always I always remember that if a bike broke and two weeks into the riding season and they kept it a month that was a third of the riding season it's like a boat if a boat breaks in the beginning of the, <laughs> the season for going out in boats but if you fix things yourself and you learn how to fix it and and our that's part of the reason I have this channel to share that information that I've gotten over the years and people have passed on to me both ways. There's always some comment, and I usually try to save it for the end of the video, that I really, really appreciate the comment. And the, these come in on a regular basis. I just try to condense them down to what, you, what I hear a lot of. So many people like bikes and breakfast. Bikes and breakfast, and thank you, Dale. Bikes and breakfast, when I record that, and there's always positive comments. People enjoy it. New people show up. It's a great way of promoting it. I have to get to the other. See, there's three other bikes and breakfasts that I, because of I want to ride with Luciano and different things, they conflict with my home schedule too. But the one on 9W that Dale runs, I always try to make that. But I'm going to try to make more in the future. That's for sure. And Dale, again, thank you. That is such a great way to make some new friends. I made half of the friends I have, I met at the bikes and breakfast. And we met a, a gal at a widow. At, at Rutt's Hut. She'll be going there next, the next one. She was all excited. She needed to know how to get the information. I, I introduced her to Dale and Dale put all the information on her phone. So we, we might have some new people at the next Bikes and Breakfast. And I met Oscar there. And Oscar's already upgraded my camera equipment and we're going to hopefully get together soon for some riding. Anyway, another thing that happens all the time, and, and I, 
I really like this. It's fun, and but I, but I know people share this with me. This is from a guy named Flex J, and and the people there's several of these. I don't try to include everyone, but they have the same exact memories that I have. They they see my video and they see an RD or a uh, in the case a GS the the Kawasaki, and they'll in their mind they say, "Oh, I remember that bike. My friend had one. I had one. He had one." Oh, well, that used to be the king of the hill, the king of the mountain. This, that, I beat this guy. I lost to this, went to the dregs. It stirs up memories that you have of what I call the good old days. Now, for a person 30 years old, you're in the good old days. Don't don't start looking back too, fa too fast. But, but when you're in your 70s or 60s or even 50s, looking back is half of the fun of having those adventures in the first place. The adventures Ray Straub and I had, in the 70s, going to the racetrack, going to here, working on working on bikes and, and painting bikes and just incredible memories. And then I see something and I say, oh, it brings back a memory. It's something that, that really, I don't know how to even explain it, unless it happens to you. Obviously, it happens to Flex Street. Or you, even if you didn't have that bike, you knew your friend had it and you say, oh man, he was the king of the hill or he had the fastest Triumph or the fastest Harley or whatever. And it's always great memories. And that's one of the things I try to do on my video channel is make those memories come back to life. I don't know if I've been successful about doing it. Maybe this video is successful. If it isn't, it's the same exact price, free. Now, as I'm ending the video, I'm trying to uh, remember some of the wonderful times I've had with Luciano at the racetrack and many many track days and all of the fun we've had working on bikes over the years i don't know how you could replace that i don't know how you could replace some of the friendships we've had with other people with with glenn and vince and jose and all of the people that have been part of the and chris of course and now michelle and everybody with we we form a little nucleus of people that enjoy hanging out together watch out for each other's back Try to ride safe and not hurt each other or do something stupid or whatever. And and I look back, the thing that I'm trying to, to impress on everybody is you have these adventures and you have them in real time. And that happens in a course of a track day. That's an eight-hour day. You have eight hours of fun. But then you have the memory forever. And those memories, some of the things here with the old FZR painted up like a Ferrari and like and with Joe Adamusco coming down to the track day with us and hanging out and taking video and all of the fun we had along the way with all of the bikes we had. And, and I just can't, I can't, I wish I could put it in a bottle and sell it. But you have to have the adventure and then have the memory. So if you're new to the channel, we do try to share useful information, both on shop projects and on the rides we go on. And this time of year, we're going to be doing a lot of riding. We're right in the beginning of the summer right now. And we try to share the rides we take on all the bikes in our little humble collection. Share the whole philosophy of Evil Twins <clears throat> and how that's worked for me. And most of all, the friendships we have and the friendships we share. And the good times. And, and at the end of having these good times, the best thing is we have all those wonderful memories to relive over and over. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. We post every day and we'll try to see you tomorrow.